um, an update before I lose some of you is um, benchmarks. We um, got word we're trying to get some uh, additional information on this. The benchmarks will be going down uh, close of business on March 3rd. They will be coming back um, March 20th. And so uh, just be aware that, that there is going to be kind of a downtime um, coming up here shortly um, for the benchmarks. Um, and, and so planning accordingly if you're using those um, uh, for midterm um, assessments and things like that, just, just know that you've got kind of a blackout window there happening. <clears throat> and uh, if we get more information during this training, we'll, we'll let you know of what else is happening. Okay, so we're, we're really pleased that the benchmarks um, are are being um, well received um, and and that this is uh, turning out to be a really positive um, uh, we're getting a lot of positive feedback from the field um, and so we're just going to kind of go over the benchmarks how to access them um, on the uh, on the sage portal and then um, how to uh, access the reports so just really quickly um, on the SAGE portal, you will go um, through, a teacher would go through the, the teacher site. Um, they would use the uh, live test administration um, button um, and then select um, a benchmark. So you can see that summative, summative is there, interim is there, benchmarks are there, and then also we have a braille version of our benchmarks. So you would um, select your benchmarks. Um, by subject in their math, reading, science, writing. Writing is a single prompt. <clears throat> and right now, there is not a rubric when you score your writing. So you'll get a scale score. You'll be able to, uh, a teacher would be able to open up and see the prompt. A teacher would be able to open up and see what each student um, wrote. But we don't have, um, we don't have the nice colored uh, rubric that we see on on the interims and the summatives. So cl the class interim, the full reporting interim, and the summatives on the student reports all give you that nice color-coded rubric. You don't get that in the benchmark right now. So just be aware of that one. Um, okay, so once the students have logged into the, um, to their secure browser and taken the benchmark, um, close that session out, and then the teacher, very shortly, like you know, just a few minutes, can then on the Sage portal open Airways and start accessing the results of that test. Okay, so this is I, I just have included. Um, it is a PDF that is on the um, Sage portal. These would be the steps to go through, and I'm just going to kind of go through them quickly. They'll be on this PowerPoint, and then. Um, and then you can access them on the on the portal. <clears throat> All right, so now we've given the test and we're ready to um, talk about this with our class. So um, the best feature about, about this benchmark is that um, once you have students that have taken the test, right there, right during that class period, you could, a teacher could open that up and open up each of the items, identify what questions the students missed the most, which question, questions the students did the best on, um, and really have a good um, instructional uh, tool there um, with this Airways. Now we want to remind you um, that these are coming from the interim bank, and so they are a secure item. It's okay to beam it up on the screen in the classroom and to have a discussion about it. Um, it is not okay to print, to do a, a, a screen copy and, and post that anywhere um, because those are um, part of our interim bank. Um, but feel free to encourage your teachers to um, use it for um, a discussion piece um, with the students and, and, and that is, uh, that would be an appropriate use to, for those, I, those item summaries. Okay, teachers, <coughs> schools, and districts all have a report that they can look at. Oh, I bumped it again. 
Okay. And so when, a, when an LEA um, logs in, um, they will see the list of tests. Um, so you can see on the screen, you'll see benchmark um, ELA grade 11. Um, and then if I click on that, then it will start to drill down by schools. And then I can narrow it down, that down to the teachers. Um, and then I can narrow that down to the students. And teachers, of course, start have the class level and then on down with their permissions. Um, the other place that you can um, get some reports um, is in TIDE through the test completion um, tab. And it, so if you want to see um, how are my schools, are they using um, the assessments, um, you can just look through here on a, on a large report. It would be a very large scroll down that you'd be going through. But you can also access through TIDE. Um, you can just run a test completion. And that will be an Excel file that you'd be able to sort through. <clears throat> so a teacher um, is going to be able to see the students who participated in that session and then the students who are members of the teacher's roster. Okay, so um, just kind of a big screen here. I can see how many students. So I've circled that 269 students um, in that school or district. Um, school would be like a charter. Um, I could say that 269 students um, of that district have taken that test and then by clicking on that I can drill down and see which schools and which teachers and then and then continue to drill down. Um, I also get a performance distribution and I can see the dates of when those were taken. Okay, so this is drilling down to the next level. I've, I have three schools listed there. I can see how that 269 is distributed between those three schools and an average performance and scale score. And we navigate using the, the little um, magnifying glass. Um, also, there's a dashboard up at the top um, uh, the, that has the bed, breadcrumbs. So right now I'm in dashboard and then district performance on test. And I'm going to stop for just a minute. I have a couple of questions. So is there a way for students to do the benchmark test? Um, so that they're doing them um, at the same time? If, if you'll restate that question for me. Um, how do we know how the performance distribution correlates to proficiency scales on the summative test? Um, the, they use a scale score, and I'll get to that slide. They have a scale score, but it's only the, the scale score only applies to the group of students that are taking the test. So if I... Um, I had 30 students take the test, <clears throat> excuse me, 30 students take the test, I get an average scale score there. Um, then I get a, a uh, green, yellow, uh, red um, distribution on that. Um, because we're talking about a reporting category, we're only testing on a reporting category, and we're only taking um, you know, as, as few as five questions from that one reporting category. We don't have, you know, that's not going to, to give me a really good predictor of the summative test. This is just a very small sampling. So for now, um, I, can, um, I can see as a teacher who in that reporting category who is testing low, and I can start building instruction there and, and working with them. But do I know that that student would also... Yeah, it's coming from the internet. Some students were pilot. Right. And so the questions are... Um, the questions are all predictive. You know, the questions are from the interim bank um, and the summative bank, you know, they tie together. Um, um, I feel like I'm talking in circles now. Have I have I answered yeah. that question? No, I think there's a I think there's a couple of questions. Okay, and and maybe so. <clears throat> so hi everybody. Um, the the question about the strength of predictability on these benchmarks comes back to the original design. So for and some of you may not have been around when we did this. So I think it's worth a worth a repeat. 
the interim bank, which is the same items that these benchmarks come from, was all part of the summative SAGE bank in the first years of SAGE. So all of the items, so the question about how did the benchmark question difficulty compared to summative and interim, they are the same. Um, they're the same difficulty, gone through, they've gone through all of the same item reviews. That's why we can say that the um, that they are predictive of how a student would perform on that reporting category if they would have taken the summative that very day. Um, so the, the question that Terry was trying to answer about these performance categories, right, we're just giving you a very small snapshot of a reporting category. So we're giving you a distribution within that reporting category. We don't do that on the summative, right? We're trying to give you on that reporting category of items that we know are super high quality, that have been piloted and were on the summative once, that's how students' performance is on those items for that reporting category. So I don't know if that helps at all. Um, these aren't just items we, you know, they, they're, they're not just throwaway items or extra items or whatever. They're from the summative test, which is why we've heard in a lot of cases, or in some cases, some schools have gone away from using the interims and they're using the benchmarks instead because it's a more instructionally sensitive measure of the same thing the interim is measuring. And you're able to, you know, do that across time and in multiple opportunities and be able to get some uh, more sensitive reporting clearly than we do in the uh, interim. So I don't know if that helps or not. And I've been <coughs> out of the office for a few weeks, so I appreciate everyone holding down the fort. But yeah, follow up with other questions. All right, so another question here, do students have to take the test all at the same time? No, um, that is one of the greatest benefits of this. You um, teach, teach a unit for a couple of weeks. You want to see the progress of the students, give form A. Um, talk about it, find out where students are struggling, which questions were they struggling with? Was it the tool that they were struggling with? Um, identify that. Do any reteaching that needs to be done. You can come back and you can give Form A again, or there um, are Form B and some in some cases of Form C. Um, we we don't want to see. Um, you know, this would be a concern. Is if you're really interested in testing all of them at the same time, just give an interim test um, because of the amount of time. Um, the class reporting uh, test uh, interim test is much shorter than trying to take each individual benchmark um, test. Yeah. And, and so we're not trying to kill students off with testing here. We just, we're trying to use these for instructional purposes. So when you teach, then test so that you can see how is my instruction doing and who do I need to target again. So Bryce, is your question like, can kids take it at home <coughs> and some kids take it at nine o'clock in the morning and some kids take it at three o'clock in the morning? Right, so it has to be proctored. So uh, the teacher does have to fire up the TA you know, system and it has to be proctored. So we can't just set it up to set it home as a homework assignment for kids to do on their own. The teacher does have to be involved in the administration. So if the teacher wants to set it up at nine o'clock for some kids and three o'clock for other kids, the teacher can do that, but it is a proctored test. All right, okay, next question that I'm seeing. Um, and so the comment from Denise that this is a prime time to be giving the benchmarks, why are they going down? We're, we're waiting on some more information on that. Um, we do know that there, there is just a time when things have to um, be updated and, and unfortunately this is kind of hitting at this time. Yeah, my guess is it has to do with the, la the launch of the <coughs> summative window on March 20th, but um, I wasn't really aware of that until that came up on this AD webinar, so we pushed back to AIR to find out why it's going down um, in that time that I know I would want to be using it maybe as a teacher as well. So great question. We will uh, try and figure out more about what's going on with that. Okay. Um, do ADs need to assign the benchmarks or can teachers just assess them on their own? So um, they are enabled, automatically enabled. If your AD uh, changes the test window, creates an actual test window for the benchmarks, then that would limit when they can be given, um, but they are open and teachers can, uh, can use them anytime they would like. And, and like I said, they can give them, they can give them more than once. Um, there is not a, a limit, <clears throat> but again, we don't want uh, to test the same test so often that the kids just memorize the answers rather than actually understanding what um, is being asked of them. 
So Stacy had a couple uh, a question to follow up. The distribution in relation to the students that took the test or in relation to a scale score. So let me answer this as a question, Terry. The way I understand it is we've got the scale score that's tied back to that interim and summative scale, right? Mm -hmm. We've got the scale score that we know has some validity to it. Then the distribution is just of the, the group of kids who took the test where they fell. Is that right, yeah. Terry? Let me let me bump ahead. There's there's some things here. Okay. <clears throat> Um, like what's the so standard the performance that? column shows a distribution of students' abilities estimates. The chart summarizes the performance level for the students in the aggregate. Okay, and then these evaluations are made with respect to that single proficiency level performance standard. The student scores with the standard error band is evaluated, and, and so then there's three things. If the score is more than one standard error above the proficiency cut, the student is considered as, as an above proficient. Um, the student score, um, if it's more than one standard deviation below, then, it, then it's a below, and, and then if it's right in that proficiency cut, then they're near. The standard error is based on the student's responses to the specific set of items administered. Um, and, so, and so this can affect score. So two students could have the same um, ability estimate but different standard errors. And, and so one might be classified as a near and the other as an above simply because the standard error for the latter was smaller and we are more uh, confident with the precision of, um, of that score. So. So, so Terry, let me restate that. This is for my benefit. Yeah, yeah. So, <clears throat> so the performance cuts, so the standard that's on this benchmark reporting is indeed tied back to the scale scores on the test and that overall scale score, the, the cut scores for the test overall. Is that correct? Yes. So we've basically taken the cut scores from like the interim, right? And we've, we've, trans, we've, we've transferred those onto each little reporting category. And you've got to remember, we didn't do standard setting at each reporting category level. So we've just taken the overall scale score distribution for the performance categories on the overall test for that greater subject. And we basically just laid it on top of these reporting categories. So it's not saying that the kid's guaranteed, Terry said this, we're not guaranteeing that the kid's going to score well. We're saying that, uh, you know, in the, in the grand scheme of things, the kids in the yellow are the bubble kids where we can't quite tell if they're going to, you know, be mastering the content or not. But for sure, the kids in the red need some attention. Mm -hmm. And we're pretty confident the kids in the green are doing pretty well. But we don't, we don't make these great predictive claims on the reporting categories from the benchmarks, which is why it's an instructional tool. So it's meant to give the teacher that, ah, uh, these kids are like need a lot of attention. These kids seem to be doing pretty well. These kids I might need some more information on. Um, that's the that's that's about as far as we can go. Um, so, Erica, the question: When your board is wanting you to report on the benchmark results, and do they predict the summative? That's that's some dangerous uh, dangerous territory that we're getting into. It's the benchmarks were not designed to predict performance on the Sage, right? We're saying that if the kids took the Sage that day, they'd perform about this well on the reporting category. Okay. Um, so another way to phrase it with the board would be that the benchmarks are a screening tool to identify students who need more attention prior to being able to do well on SAGE. So this idea of it predicting, you know, yes, the items came from the summative, yes, that's how the kids would perform if they took it that day, but it's really, you know, hey, teachers, what are the things that are the strengths and the weaknesses right now today in my class? Um, you know, if kids are getting, you know, lots of greens, lots of high scale scores, chances are they're going to probably not do terrible on SAGE. But um, maybe, maybe consider it as a screening tool as much as a, more than a predictive tool, if you would. It just, you know, we start getting on thin ice when we start making claims that, you know, we know that, you know, this is, you know, Southam's class is going to, they're all going to be well, do well on SAGE because there's just too many variables involved. Right. Okay, thanks, Erica. <coughs> I'll stop talking. That's too many words. <laughs> All right, just going, just backing up now, looking at navigating those reports, um, so I can I can drill through districts district reports, um, school reports, um, and then um, 
as I drill down into a teacher report, it breaks the screen in half. So I can see the test that I've given up at the top and then at the bottom, my students. And so then when I click on my students, then I get just that student information. When I'm clicking on a test, then I'm seeing the, the whole class. I can see um, how the whole class performed. Um, these are the, so there's a, an example of the bar that's up at the top of the teacher report and then um, what each of those um, are trying to tell you. So the assessment name and then there's a descriptor there, the test reason. And, and right now we don't have test reasons in there. Um, that is a feature that um, is probably coming next year. Um, and, uh, but you will get student count, an average score, performance distribution, and then the the date when the student last took the test. Um, again, on that uh, report, if I had the columns, so when I'm looking at my students, here are the column descriptors for each of those. And so um, this is an example of a teacher who has opened up a certain test. So they've opened up um, the uh, grade three edition test and so they can see the students um, that have taken the test, um, the average score and how they did, whether they were above or below. Um, and then you will see um, to the right um, the, the questions that they, the five worst questions, the five best questions, and then you narrow it down to, um, to the actual items. Um, these collapse and open just by with the plus and minus signs. And so we're looking at, um, again, list of students. Okay, we've kind of already gone over this. Now these are fixed form right now. So um, they're not interchangeable. You can't divide them and, um, and uh, or um, say I only want to report, I only want to test three of these questions because I haven't taught the other. You'll have to do the do just do the whole test and um, um, because that's how the, the test is set up. Um, we're looking at some changes for next year, which I think will be um, positive, but uh, we'll talk about those when, when that becomes a little firmer. Terry, can you go back and talk about the writing? There was a question, I think Stacy asked it. Okay. Uh, let me find it. Oh yeah, the writing results. So. They're asking for guidance on what to do with the writing results since we don't have the rubric and teachers are not quite knowing what to do with the scale score. Okay. So as far as if you, you know, how do I use the writing uh, instructionally? Um, the one advantage that you have of, of using the benchmark writing is that it's going to um, let the kids see a passage show them how to use the tools of typing in and, and highlighting and masking and writing notes and, and all of those features, um, they'll be able to practice using that. Now that they'd also be able to practice something like that in a, in a practice test or a training test. Um, the, um, and then you can actually open up and see what each student wrote. Mm -hmm. So you have the passage and then you can open up and see the, see the result. Um, without the rubric, yeah, it's it's hard to use that um, for a much deeper instruction. All thing to see, you know, oh my kids are under evidence, um, are are mostly yellows or mostly reds. We just don't have that um, availability right now. So I know that there was some talk. Um, <clears throat> there was some talk. <coughs> excuse me. When we first rolled these out, knowing that we weren't going to have that level of feedback. There were some teachers that were talking about taking the student responses, knowing the scale score that you get in SAGE, and they just threw it into Utah Compose you know, to get that kind of feedback out of Utah Compose. So they got the SAGE experience, you got that SAGE scale score, and then they threw it into Utah Compose to try and get the, the different levels of category on that same writing. Has anyone done that? Have you guys played with that? I'm curious to see if that's an, uh, an additionally useful strategy you know, maybe spot checking some kids who need a little extra support. I know my daughter, gosh, she could really benefit from from some of that feedback where they don't have to write multiple times, but you could use, I don't know, that was just a thought. I'd be interested to see your feedback and see if that's helpful. Okay. Um, I'm just reading here for just a second. Okay. 
Okay, so Stacy, you were talking about um, that tests expire kind of quickly. Um, they do. They can. Your your uh, person that has the um, ability to reopen tests could reopen them so that they aren't expired. Um, but because they're short, and because of um, the intent to be kind of an instructional thing, if they sat open for you know 10, 15 days for five five or six questions, um, maybe so much more instruction has happened in those in that time that now when we get a score that it's not going to it's it's not going to reflect what happened what their instruction was at the beginning of those 10 days versus the end of the 10 days you know because you've had you've had 10 days of instruction in there as well <clears throat> excuse me um so they do have kind of a short um a short window as as how long that they sit open um, but like I said, they can be reopened by by your um, L your assessment uh, person that's in charge of, of reopening test status. Okay, so when you go to the airways test um, and look at that teacher report, you have those pop up pop ups uh, the the plus minus that open up screens to tell you the five questions that the that the students scored the best on and the five questions that the students performed the worst on. Now you'll notice that the number up at the top is blued and, and underlined. That's how you're going to actually access the item. Um, by clicking on, you know, let's say the under the, oh, under the orange question number one, um, I could pop that open and see um, actually what the, quest, what the question was for question number one. Now I also see in there that there is a uh, percentage um, of where the kids uh, scored. So question two and question seven had a 0.04% uh, correct. So obviously not very many students got that, those answers correct. Um, versus when I'm looking in the green column, I can see that question three and eight, um, that the kids, that the most kids uh, scored the best in those areas. Um, and so those would be where I would pop up as a teacher. I'd open those up and say, okay, guys, you know, question two, we did really poorly on what's happening there. And so this is kind of what it would look like. It would pop up um, the details, what topic and content area it aligns to. Um, it'll tell you the question. And then at the bottom, um, for everything but writing, it will give you the actual rubric of why they scored, um, the how they scored what they did there. Um, and and then when you go into the students on each question, you can um, see what the student actually chose. Um, so you could find out, oh, most students picked A when they should have picked C. So you can see even why, why they're missing or, or what did they choose instead. Um, this would be a nice point to to now work this problem out together um, as a class and say hey let's let's work this one out and find out what your thinking was here okay there are two tabs um, that the performance by class is what defaults so when you first open up um, these reports it will go to performance by class you can swap that over to the to a second tab that student performance by student. Um, and this is going to give you some more information about um, how often these tests have been given. So there's two icons. One is a, a number with a little um, orange star there. And that will indicate um, that they are um, on a first attempt. It would have a two second attempt. Um, and, then the, and then the little clock um, would tell you that um, they've taken the test more than once. You would see their name listed um, a couple of times, but you'd be able to identify, well, which was the, the first time they took the test and what was their score, and what was the second time they took their test and what was their score. So you can see some growth here. So in this case, um, this student um, got a, a 429 the first time they took the test, and the second time they took the test was a 437. Um, and so they've, they've made a little bit of growth there between the two times that they took the test. Okay, the um, reports can be exported um, in a PDF or CSV file. Um, and, and that's a, a picture of the screen there that you would, 
to be able to export um, per uh, test um, so the teacher can get some, uh, have a report there. Okay, and so this is, they would log in, we've kind of talked about this, logging in on the SAGE portal um, and the different roles that are available. This is the um, banner that's at the top of the Airways um, tab. So once you click on Airways, this is what's available. It will tell you what role you um, are logged into as. Um, the inbox is where um, you'll be able to download files, just, just like if you um, were in the inbox of the OS, ORS. Um, it kind of has that same feature that if you download, it downloads to your inbox first and then you would have to download it onto your computer. Um, and so this would be an example of a, of a test that I would have uh, tried to download. So I've clicked download, it went into my inbox, and now I can download from here to my computer. Um, you can, if you have access to this, uh, you know, if you have roles, uh, that you're wanting to see, you're a, a, an LEA, you want to see a teacher um, role, um, there's a button to change that role so you can see different views. Under the task manager, um, adding and viewing rosters and then updating my class preferences. Now, right now the rosters load just um, like in Tide, but it's the same uh, format there. Um, the updating class preferences are going to let you narrow your view of what you're seeing as far as tests. So let's say that I'm a um, math teacher. Well, when I click on a student, I'm going to see all of their math benchmarks, all of their ELA benchmarks, all of their science benchmarks right now. Well, I may not be interested in all of that information. So under um, test preferences, I can narrow it down. I can click on, on that drop down and then select to say, I only want to see the math. And so you would unselect the reading and unselect the writing and unselect the science so that when I'm looking at my students or the tests, then I'm only narrowing it down to the subject that I teach. Um, and then you'd save that. And when you opened up your, your class list, um, you would, it would be a narrower focus for you. <clears throat> and then once you have made those selections under your preferences, then you would select that to say, I, I want to see all classes or I want to see what I selected as my preference. Okay, there's a print button um, up in the upper right corner of Airways. And that has um, two, two forms that it can print to you. So this is a print preview page. And that will do multiple reports on, the, um, on a table on the page. Um, and it will print as a PDF or a CSV file. Um, or I can print um, a, an actual single test. And that would narrow down that I just want to see the overall. Or I actually want to see each individual item score. So just like we were showing that question one had a point, um, a point zero 0.04, that would be included if I had the item score enabled on that print. Okay. Um, we've talked about expired tests. Um, these are non-scorable test opportunities. If it was ex expired or invalidated, it can't be scored. So invalidated would be after that time limit. Um, if they didn't finish taking the test, um, they only answered one or two questions of it and then, and then ended the test, um, it can't give them a score. Um, and so it would consider it as an invalidated score. If the test was open and started and then the time just ran out, then it's considered an expired test. So one is where they submitted the test incomplete. The other one, they, the time just ran out and it expired. It forced shut them out of it. And again, that's the, the expire, expiration is about 10 days. Okay, so you can manage um, rosters. 
Um, these are things that are available in your Tide. So if you've created some specific um, rosters in Tide, um, you'd be able to um, add those here as well. Okay, on the portal, there are some, a, uh, some support materials. The easiest way to do this, instead of trying to click through all of the folders to see where these benchmarks are, is to just in the search bar is to type the word benchmark and you will see that it walks you through how to access them. That was the page that I showed earlier that I had chopped up into a couple of slides um, for readability, but it's steps one through 10 is on that one single page that will show you how to access. And then you'll also see that there are summaries. So the, the bottom three items, summary of science, summary of math, summary of ELA, those are gonna tell you which reporting category how many forms there are, whether there's an A, a B, a C, a D, how many questions are on those forms so that you can make a decision, the teachers can make a decision to say, okay, I'm going to, um, because there's only two forms, I'm going to do an A and then a repeat A, and then I might do B um, a couple of months down the road just to make sure that there's, they still have that concept you know, in their, in their head, they still understand the concept. Um, and that applies for each of the subject areas. Um, we have had um, some comments um, for secondary math, um, and we're looking into that, um, that there were three reporting categories in one of the benchmark tests. Um, so if I recall, it was a measurement, a statistics, and um, a probability um, all in one benchmark and kind of wondering, you know, why are we putting th those three um, reporting categories into one test? Um, and so we will, we're going to explore some of those options and see what we can do. Um, Sage Help Desk contact information. All right. Any, any additional questions? Um, let me know if it would be benefit to just walk through the site. We can we can do a quick walk through, and, and I can show you um, kind of a, a demo class there, just based on what what your needs are. If anyone want to see a demo? You guys are good. That would be helpful. Go ahead. That would be helpful. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Todd just came back in the room. He, he can answer any questions about the secondary math um, benchmarks. So. Yeah, comment. Or Sorry. Yeah, I was listening on in the other room, so I thought I'd come in and talk about the the reporting categories. So in secondary math one, you have a reporting category that combines functions, statistics, and uh, number and quantity. That's true on the summative. That's true on the interim, and that has to be true on the uh, benchmarks. Okay. Uh, the reason why that is is because there's so few questions um, that on the summative. Um, students may or may not actually see any questions in the number and quantity. Um, in order to get any type of score, we had to combine them together. And since that's true on the summative and in term, we had to do that on the, on the benchmarks as well. There aren't enough questions in the interim to just do, say, the number and quantity, because um, there's only two or three questions in the entire interim bank. So that's why we had to do that. Rather than take the option of, not give you any type of uh, feedback, that's the way we went. Okay, so. great. Thank you, Connor. Pre appreciate that information. Okay, so let me, so I'm, I'm now on the SAGE portal. And again, we've talked about going to the live test administration. So you'd log in there. So this is what a teacher is looking at. A teacher is going to then go in, and I'll go to a training school here. 
the teacher sitting down with her class starting the session. Okay, it is a live, it is a live session. And so then I would go to the plus sign of the benchmark modules. Be careful about clicking this plus here because that enables all the math, all the reading, all the science, all the writing at the same time. So when you're selecting, keep drilling down to the grade level um, and the test that you would like to give. So as you can see, I'm in fourth grade and I have a form A, a form B, and a form C of measurement um, data and geometry. So as a teacher, um, you know, I can, I can give form A after um, a week of instruction, then I can see who needs some reteaching, then I can give form B at the end of that one, um, and then uh, form C I could possibly use a couple of months down the road to say, do we still understand this concept or do I have to brush up on, e on anything there? Okay, and then once you select your test, then you would start the live test session. The, the students would get, um, would get their uh, session ID and log into their secure browser. Okay. So I'm just going to back out of that now. Okay, so they've taken their test. They're finished with the test. We're ready to see now what are the results. So I go into Airways. And I'm a teacher, and so I gave this editing test to my students. And I'm going to open up now and see how we did. And because I only have one student, um, I don't have the five best, five worst for the class. Um, if I had if I had more students, then I would then I would see some variation. And so I can see that this question was worth two points and this child missed that completely. So let's open up question number one and see what happened here. So I open up question number one. I can see kind of a frequency of how many students answered that question. Um, I get the details of the content standard. I can now read the question with my students. This is a hot text, so these buttons um, are things that they would click on to, to change their answer. And then at the bottom is the rubric to say, in order to have earned two points, they had to have gotten stretch and sense correct. If they only got um, stretch, then they get the one point. Um, and so that will tell you how they scored this. So I can then, as a teacher, say, okay, let's look at this. Why do you think you missed this question? Oh, I didn't understand what they were talking about. Or, oh, I didn't realize, I didn't know that I was supposed to click on those buttons to change it. Um, depending on what kind of answers you might be getting from your students, um, you know, that's going to tell you, oh, I, we need to practice on the practice test or the training test so that they know how to use the tools. Um, or that's a content that I need to brush up on. Okay, I'm going to back, I'm going to go into the student. Remember, I'm at the, I'm at the test right now. I can now click on my student and see their individual, um, how they answered their questions. So at the test level, I could see the five best, five worst questions, but I want to see for this specific student how they did. And so by clicking on that student, then I can say, wow, okay, they only got question five, question seven correct, missed all the other ones. I'm going to sit down with this student um, and, and try to help them out individually, or I'm going to, um, as a class, um, see which ones were the worst and talk about it as a class. Um, backing up through my breadcrumbs, so I'm at the, I'm back up to the, to my school view, and then my dashboard view here, and I had to do a couple of clicks to get down to my student there, or I can go straight to my students here. Okay. Um, we mentioned the task manager updating the test preferences. And so right now I'm looking at the reading tests, grade three, um, those, I can narrow those down so that I'm only seeing, um, you know, I don't want to see that test. I don't, I only want to see this grade three. Then I would save and close. Now, of course, this applies more if I had math and science here showing. I could say I don't want to see the science test or I don't want to see the math test because I'm a, I'm an eighth grade ELA teacher and, and those other things um, I don't, I'm not so worried about. Um, this, uh, this would be a reason why you would narrow that down. 
save it and close it, and then I would only see my ELA questions. Okay. Again, print feature, so I can print my assessments or I can print my students. So clicking on my assessments, I see the list of the tests. Um, right now, the test reason is, is always as unassigned. I see an average score, an average proficiency, um, or performance distribution, and then the date, and then I can save that, um, save it as a PD, to a PDF or download it as a CSV file. I'm going to cancel that. Um, printing for students. Okay, so then I'm seeing specifically that one student. So far that one student has only taken one test. If they had taken multiple tests, I would see all the tests that that student has taken. Okay, any other questions? So I have a... Okay, Julie's got one here, just a moment. So a couple of things, if you're still with us, um, that we've been, that I've been bouncing around email um, while Terry's been taking you through the system. So one, the reason for the benchmarks going down in March, it is tied to the summative. Because the benchmarks use the TA system, which is all embedded with the live testing systems. The interim window closes the beginning of March. The benchmarks are just another version of the interim. They have to go down. So we would all love for the systems to be able to be up every day, every school year, but we have to prepare for the summative testing. And unfortunately, the benchmarks are tied all into that system. So I reminded AIR that, well, if I was a teacher, I'd maybe want a March data point from those benchmarks. So you've got to look at your schedules strategically, see what you can get in before March, see what can wait until after the 20th, you know, knowing that that's still, you know, significantly before the end of the school year for most of us. Um, the other item I wanted to circle back on was this idea of the writing rubrics. So the SAGE summative essays we don't ever deal with, right? We're just talking about the benchmarks. And the benchmarks, as we all know, they are not public, but they're not secure like the summative, meaning it's okay for teachers and students to see the stuff and to be working with them in the class. Um, so I'm going to follow up back up with Kim. Um, but I don't really see any super big red flags with doing what I said, taking the student's response, knowing they're scored differently, right? So the Utah Compose, the traits that Utah Compose scores off of are different than what Sage looks at. But good writing is good writing. My daughter's spelling is bad in both systems. Um, so taking, you know, the prompts and kind of playing with the systems, I'd, I'd, I'd be interested with uh, that idea and what's going on out there. The other thing is we have taken um, a range finding activity in Utah Compose that Kim's called Sage-like prompts that are in Utah Compose. Um, that's out there. So if you're not aware of that on the writing support side, um, email Kim and get her to tell you about what these Sage-like prompts are that are in Utah Compose now that we did a range finding on. Um, because that may be able to support some writing instruction as well. So those are a couple of things that came up that I wanted to um, follow up on. And that's a question for Gary. Okay. Um, that might be because in Tide your levels of permission there. So that might be something to talk um, to find out um, if in your Tide so I could switch over to Tide. And then under user roles, you know, what user roles do you see? Um, if you're seeing a very limited number there, then um, that might be an adjustment that you want, that you need to be have made for you or you need to make for yourself to add um, additional permissions there. Any other questions or comments? Pretty much have everyone still on, so and you can share game. Well, appreciate your time. Um, I I've seen some really positives here. Um, I I like what I'm uh, what I'm hearing out in the field. Um, I like I mentioned a little bit of a concern when I heard um, that all the benchmarks are be, being given like in one week. 
um, as if it was a giant interim test. Um, you know, we don't want to kill off our, our kiddos. Um, and so, um, you know, if we can use them for instructional purposes to, to guide our instruction or to see where kids are struggling, um, that, would, that would probably be the best way to use those. Um, Sue, I will, I will check on that a little bit more right. um, to find out why maybe you're not seeing some of those different options, but you are seeing them in type. So um, if you'll send me an email um, so, that I have, um, so that I have your school district as well. Okay. If there are no further questions, oh, we have, we have one question or a comment. Okay, Julie Benson here. Hi, back to WIDA. <laughs> so um, WIDA is going to offer two more webinars for LEAs to help explain the reasons for the changes um, in student proficiency. So if you're interested in that, um, one is March 10th from 1 to 2 and March 14th from 1 to 2 is another one. So we'll send out the links to those so if you want to participate in those. But that, they're different than the ones that I mentioned earlier. So this is just to explain the reasons or anticipated changes in student proficiency based on the new standard setting. So we'll send that out. Look for those links. Thanks. Yeah. Good timing because we're about done. Okay. If there's no further uh, questions or comments, we will let you go. Have a great day. And we'll see you in person at our next uh, assessment director meeting. Thanks, everybody.